Good morning, church family. It's so good to see everyone here this morning. I'm so glad that you have chosen to join us on this special Christmas Eve day for our morning worship service. Uh, my name is Jeff, and I'd like to welcome you this morning to worship here at Sterling First United Methodist. For those that are joining us on, via the live stream, we're so glad that you're with us that way as well. A few quick announcements this morning. Um, this week, there is no Connect community meal on Wednesday night. Those will resume um, Wednesday, January 3rd from 5 to 6.30. And there's no children or youth activities during this break time as well. And those will resume on Wednesday, January 10th. So a couple weeks with no, none of those. Um, next Sunday, December 31st, Pastor Amy and Mike will be hosting a come and go holiday open house at the Parsonage from 2 to 4 p.m. All are invited to stop by for a time of food and fellowship. The church office will be closed tomorrow through January 2nd in observance of the holidays. The office will reopen on Wednesday, January 3rd. And for pastoral care during this time, please contact Pastor Amy. Uh, registration for the Connect 242 Intergenerational Spring Retreat to Colorado continues through the end of December. So just one more week. Come and get away to beautiful Estes Park and the YMCA of the Rockies for three days of building up your relationship with God and others. For, or, for more information about the retreat, you can contact the church office. Uh, tonight, uh, for Christmas Eve, we'll have a traditional candlelight and communion service at 7 p.m. right here. This afternoon from 4 to 6, there will be an open come-and-go communion here in the sanctuary. So please join us tonight for a special evening of worship as we celebrate the light of Christmas. As you can see up here, we have many beautiful Christmas poinsettias that were purchased in memory and honor of loved ones, and those will be available for pickup after this evening's Christmas Eve candlelight service. So make sure to take that home with you if you bought one of those. Are there any other announcements? Well, if not, then uh, if there's any prayer requests that you have, please let the church office know so that we can be praying for you in any way that we can. And at this, turn, at this time, we'd like to turn our attention to God as we prepare our hearts for worship.
The gift of love is the essence of the birth of Christ. The Holy One wanted to be so present with us that God's spirit became flesh in order to inhabit the gifts of touching, healing, comforting, and challenging. Love is a clarion call to us as Jesus' disciples. The more love we put into the world, the better the world will be. We light this candle of love as a sign that we will be present with love in the world. Let us pray. Holy living light of God, you are our loving presence. Let this love grow in our lives each day so we can be a present of love to others. Unwrap and open our hearts. May it be so. Amen. Good morning once again. Let us arise and stand together and we will sing Hark, the Herald Angels Sing, the King of Heaven together.
be seated. We'll invite the children forward for children's time. spot there okay that is awesome <laughs> all right so it's been a long wait since we started Advent hasn't it how many of you have been waiting patiently how many of you have been waiting not so patiently <laughs> yes some of both I guess that's right well, each week to mark the time as we prepare our hearts and our minds during the season of Ad Advent, we've been lighting one of the candles on our Advent wreath. And how many candles are lit today? Four! That means we're getting close, doesn't it? It means we're getting very, very close. Now, traditionally, those candles stood for peace, hope, love, and joy to remind us of some of the things that Jesus brought into the world. And with each week, as we light one more candle, we're bringing a little bit more light to the world. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And we remember that light that Christ brought to the world as we light each one of those candles. Now, did you know that in Bethlehem, at the site where Jesus was thought to be born, there's a church. And in that church, they keep a continuous flame burning. And that flame, marking the site of Jesus' birth, has burned there for over 1,000 years. And each year, from that site in Bethlehem, that flame is shared from person to person to person throughout the Advent season. And that light is spread throughout the world. And did you know that the light that we have right here in our sanctuary today came from that light in Bethlehem. So from one person to another person to another person, from this lantern right here to the sanctuary candles, to the Advent candles, that light has been shared. And today it's right here with us. And just like that journey that the peace light has made all around the world, we can share that peace, that love, that joy and that hope that Christ has brought us and that burns in our hearts with all of those around us. So as we look at the candles today, we can remember where they came from, but we can remember more importantly what they mean, what they stand for, and how Christ brought that to us. Sound pretty good? I think so. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for these children. Thank you for the joy and the love, the hope that they bring to our lives, and thank you for the peace that you bring to all of us. Please help us to feel that peace in our hearts and to share that with others through this Advent and through this coming Christmas season. Amen. And before you go back to help you remember the light that Christ brought, I want each family to grab one of those ornaments that you can take back and hang on your tree, all right? Thanks for coming up. Thank you, Jonathan. Now, Jonathan uh, tells me you went to Wichita, right, to pick up this light. It's kind of like a relay, right, it, for, from all different places and keeps handing it off. And so Jonathan went to Wichita, so now he's carrying that light. And, and so then that way, it's just such a special thing to have something here with us today. So thank you for going to get that and having it present here with us in the sanctuary, being part of the, the Christ Light Relay. The peace candle. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite forward Aspen Campbell, 
along with her family, for the sacrament of Christian baptism. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. So I present to you Aspen Campbell for baptism. So, Kayla and Dakota, I have some questions for you. On behalf of this church, I ask you, do you reject the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and truly and, honest, and earnestly repent of your sins? Do you accept the freedom and the power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever form they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ is your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church that by, te by your teaching and example, she may be guided in to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? Now to you, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Aspen now before you in your care? God's help. So let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Sanford under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and of life everlasting. Now, Addison, as big sister here, I'm going to ask you if you can take this and pour some water here into this bowl. Thank you. I'm sure you are very helpful in your house, too. It's pretty cool having a little sister, isn't it? <laughs> I invite you now to pray with me as we uh, pray over the water. O oh God, oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away her sin, claim her as your own, and give new life so that dying and being raised with Christ, she will be part of your work in the world, your dream for all creation, and share in Christ's final victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. No. Will you come to me? Ew.
He's right there. They're right there. <laughs> what name do you give to this child? Aspen Jane Campbell. I baptize you in the name of the Father and in the Son and in the Holy Spirit. I know I'm messing up your hair. I know. <laughs> Aspen Jane. May the Holy Spirit work within you, and that being born through water in the Spirit, you may be, grow to be, a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. So members of the household of God, I commend Aspen Jane to your love and care. Do all in your powers to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, who, may, who you may live in grace and in peace. And now, as we have formally welcomed Aspen in, into this brother and sisterhood and fellowship in Christ, I now welcome, I invite you to welcome her informally by your applause and praise. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Cole? This is Cole Evans. And brothers and sisters in Christ, as we have just heard, through the sacrament of baptism, God's Spirit has been poured out upon water. Water poured over and immersing us. Water that flows freely from all who will receive it. Water from the streams of God, saving power and justice. Water that brings hope to all those who thirst for righteousness. Water that refreshes life, nurtures growth, and offers new birth. Today, Cole Evans has once again come to these waters to proclaim his faith in our presence. To Christ who has raised us, the Spirit who has birthed us, and the Creator who is making all things new. So Cole, I ask you, do you turn away from the powers of sin and death? Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Will you let the Spirit use you as prophets to, to be a prophet to the powers that be? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they may present themselves? Will you proclaim the good news and live as a disciple of Jesus Christ, his body on earth? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in his grace? Do you promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to all people, all ages, all nations, and races? Will you be a living witness to the gospel wherever you are and in all that you do? Will you serve as Christ's representative out into the world? It's like applying for a job, right? Yeah. <laughs> Will you do Christ's work? Yes. Do you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? Now, Cole, I'm going to ask you to remember that you were baptized in the name of the Father and in the Son and the Holy Spirit and rejoice in that. Let us pray. Loving God, today we are so thankful for how you love us all 
Today, we are thankful for the commitments made by Aspen's family and by Cole. Lord, I ask that you continue to let your presence be known to them. Walk with them, guide them, and strengthen them. And God, be with us all so that we may all continue to grow in our relationships with you and with one another. Amen. Thank you. And it takes a brave man of courage to stand up here and profess your faith in front of this church. Congratulations. Thank you. I love the holidays. Is anybody else with me? Y'all love the holidays? It's a time where we all get to gather with family or friends. We get together and we eat and we talk and we talk and we eat and we eat and we talk and we eat some more. It's at Christmas time or times like that when we get together as a family that we love to tell stories. And there's certainly no shortage of stories concerning Christmas that can warm our hearts. Stories like this one, written by M.A. Matthews in 1972, titled The Gift of a Child. And he writes, The day was frightfully cold, with swirls of snow in the air, and I was looking out, in the, li out the living room window, with, with fa which faces our church. And workmen had just finished constructing the annual and nativity scene in the churchyard when school let out for the day. Children gathered excitedly around the crash, but they didn't stay for long because it was far too cold for lingering. All the children took a quick look at the manger scene and then hurried away, except for one little girl who was about the age of six. The wind lashed at her bare legs and caused her coat to fly open in the front. But she was oblivious to the weather. She was absolutely captivated by this manger scene. All of her attention was riveted and on the statues before her. Which one? I really couldn't tell. Was she fascinated by Mary or, or the baby or the shepherds? or the wise men, or, or the animals, I wondered to myself. And then the most beautiful, simple moment occurred. I saw her remove her blue woolen headscarf, and the wind quickly knotted her hair into a wild tangle, but she didn't seem to mind. She had only one thought. Lovingly, she wrapped her scarf around the statue of baby Jesus, and after she had covered it, she patted his, his little ceramic head, and then she kissed it on the cheek. Satisfied, she skipped down the street, her hair frosted with tiny diamonds, diamonds of ice. As I watched this, I realized that Christmas had come once again. Now, 50 years later, this simple little story raises two important questions for us to think about together on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Number one, what really is Christmas? And number two, when does it come? 
I mean, because surely Christmas is more than just a date on a calendar. Surely Christmas is more than a vague or annual nod in the direction of Bethlehem. And as nice as surely that they are, Christmas is more than poinsettias, presents, parades, and pageants. Yes, there's so much more to Christmas than shopping and cooking and stocking stuffing, or stocking stuffing, stuffing stockings and decking the halls. But what exactly is it that puts that deep meaning of Christmas deep down into our souls? What writes the Christmas story indelibly onto our hearts? Well, the very essence, at the very core of Christmas, is love. It's about this, it's all about this incredible gift of love that's been bestowed upon us through the birth of God's Son. The gift of God's presence upon us is a gift of undying, sacrificial love. So that's the meaning of Christmas right there in four simple letters, L-O-V. And whenever and wherever we receive God's sacrificial love, whenever and wherever we pass it on to others, and whenever and wherever God's love is accepted and shared, Christmas is celebrated again and again. When we are able to believe like Mary, trust like Joseph, hope like shepherds, seek like wise ones, worship like angels, and love like Jesus, Christmas comes to us no matter what the date is on the calendar. One of the best known and most quoted verses of all of Scripture is John 3.16. If you'd like, you can say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you hear that? Do you hear that that is exactly what Christmas is all about? It's all about love, truly, physically and literally. Love came down at Christmas, as the songwriter has written to tell us. Humanity, all of humanity, needed a Savior, and God sent one. We needed a Christ, so God sent us one. God so loved the world that he gave us. He gave us the world, his only Son. And when we are able to bow down before that, when we are able to come to grips with that, when we accept God's gift of love, when we receive the Messiah into our hearts and walk in his ways, whenever and wherever that happens, it's Christmas. When we love God, there is hope and peace and love and joy and Christmas. And when we love others, when we love others, Christmas is celebrated. Here's another Christmas story by an unknown author for us to ponder on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Many years ago, there lived in a small village a cobbler by the name of Conrad. Day by day, early and late, tap, tap, tap of his hammer could be heard as he mended the shoes brought in to him by the villagers. Though alone and poor, this kindly older gentleman always had a warm and, smile, warm and friendly smile or word for everyone. As a result, many folks took lighter hearts away from his, from his hut along with their carefully mended shoes. Now Christmas, Christmas is a time when families draw close together, but Conrad had no family with whom he could share his Christmas. One Christmas morning, 
Some neighbors, thinking about how lonely Conrad must feel, they decided to pay him a visit. They found him sweeping away the snow on his front, in the front of his house, and, and surprised to his face, his face was radiant, and he greeted each one of them. As they entered the house, they gazed in amazement, and instead of a dreary room, they saw a place made festive with holly and evergreen. Christmas decorations brightened the walls and lined this room gracefully from the rafters. And the table, the table was set for two. Obviously, Conrad's, what Conrad was expecting a guest. Who is coming to visit you? The neighbors asked. Conrad replied, he said, well, last night, Last night, the Lord appeared to me in a dream, and he told me that I would not be alone on Christmas Day. For himself, he himself was coming to visit me, to be my guest. That's why I've prepared so joyfully. Everything is waiting here, and I am ready for him to come. After the neighbors left, Conrad sat by the window, quietly watching and waiting for the Lord to come. And as he watched, the minutes pass, they pass into hours. And he, but he scarcely noticed because he was so excited. But while he waited, while he waited, he watched a beggar pass by his window, very ragged and weary, almost frozen due to the harsh winter winds. Conrad called him in, and he offered the beggar warmth of his humble home and gave him some shoes for his frozen feet. After the beggar left, an old woman hobbled by, carrying on her back a very heavy load of firewood. Conrad ran out, and he lifted the load from her back and helped her into his humble little home. And there he gave her some food and, and for her famished body. And after she rested for a bit, he helped the woman out on her way. Once again, Conrad positioned himself by the window to watch for the Lord as he had promised. This time, Conrad noticed the sound of a little girl sobbing. So he opened up his front door and found a little girl wandering lost and frightened out in the snow. Some warm milk and some soothing words stilled the frightened, this frightened little girl. And soon afterward, he was able to restore her relationship or get her to her mother's waiting arms. Well, then once more, Conrad returned to his waiting vigil. But by now, the sun was sinking and the wintry Christmas day was coming to an end. But where was the promised guest? Anxious and weary and disappointed, Conrad dropped to his knees and he prayed, Oh Lord, where were you? I waited and I waited and I waited for you all day. And three times, or, and you didn't come. Then he heard a voice. He said, I was the beggar with frozen feet. I was the woman you fed. I was the little girl that was lost. Conrad, oh Conrad, do not be dismayed. The ver this very day, I came three times to your door. Three times my shadow crossed your floor. Now, now th this message of the story that was written so long ago, it is, it is the message of Christmas. And those very words echo the ones of the Christ child that was sent to us so long ago. And as that tiny baby grew up, he too said, My child, oh my child, truly I tell you, just as you did to the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. When we see Christ in other people and we love them and we welcome them at that very moment 
it becomes Christmas. Whenever we open the doors of our hearts, when, whenever and wherever there is compassion and there is tenderness and grace and harmony and advocacy, advocacy, advocacy and fairness, Christmas becomes part of our daily lives. My friends, oh my friends, let us not miss this beauty of Christmas. Let us not overlook the opportunity to be the gift of Christmas, the gift of presence to the world around us, so that we can all unwrap the gifts of hope and peace and love and joy together. This whole Christmas season, we can all, and some of you are coming in here today on Christmas Eve morning, and some of you, I know it, and we're stressed out, and we're worried, and we're, we've worried about finding just the, exactly that perfect Christmas gift or making that perfect Christmas dish. Because deep down, we want those people in our lives, we want them to feel special. We want them to know that we love them, that we care for them. But sometimes in all of the chaos of Christmas, we overlook the greatest gift of all. And that is all about sharing the absolutely re-giftable, non-refundable, perfectly sized, perfectly wrapped love that God has for each one of us. As we have journeyed this Advent season and marveled over God's greatest gift, the gift of Jesus that he has given us, may we each look for opportunities where we can, wherever we can, share the love of Christ. And when we do that, as we share the love of Christ, we too become a part of God's never-ending love story. Will you please pray with me? Our loving God, we thank you for giving us a chance once again to celebrate the birth of your son. We remember with awe the signs of his arrival, the glorious singing of the angels, the beckoning twinkly of a star, the hushed stillness of the night. God, we praise you for all who welcomed him, for sturdy, reliable Joseph, for beautiful, gentle Mary, for the shepherds. Oh, they were confused, but they were open-hearted. We thank you for the wise, one, wise ones, astonished and deeply moved, and even for the cattle who looked on curiously, and they shared their home with him. Father, we pray that our hearts may always be open, not just to the Christ child, but to all of your children. God, as you sent Jesus to all the world as the bearer of the good news of your love, let us carry the good news out into a divided and hurting world, beginning right here, right now, within our own families, within our congregation, within our neighbors, within our community. Father, make the spirit of Christmas linger in our hearts throughout the entire year and beyond so that we may freely and happily share your gifts with others. And God, we pray for those who have never heard the story of Jesus. We pray that they may have a chance to hear it and to respond to his loving claim. We pray for others who at this time who are so filled with anger and stress and chaos and fear that they are unable to believe in your love and they wait and they wait and they wait for you and father just let them see that you are near and you are present with us in all things god we offer this prayer in the name of lord jesus the christ and our savior amen As we continue in worship this morning, we respond to God's word and his call for our lives. One of the ways which we do that together as a church family is through our offering. It's our opportunity to give back to God a portion of which we have so richly been blessed with. We have a number of ways in which we can give this morning, both in person and online, via our church website. If you are with us today as a guest for the first time, 
We are so thankful you are with us, and your presence here today is enough of a gift for us. And so at this time, we invite the ushers to come forward. As we continue together in worship, we respond to God's call through our giving and song. in your extravagant generosity, you open the floodgates of heaven to send us love, love in person. We can neither deserve nor repay such an amazing gift. We offer instead all that we have, our worship, our talents, our time, our money, and our lives in service to the kingdom, to the kingdom to proclaim your love. May we be useful vessels in your hand to bring king, that kingdom into reality. For the sake of love incarnate, we pray. Amen. And we'll remain standing for our final song this morning. Angels we have heard on high will sing three verses together.
I want to invite you to come back or bring friends or neighbors back at 7 p.m. tonight for our candlelight and communion Christmas Eve service. Um, different message, different music. It's a whole new deal to welcome and to celebrate the birth of Christ. So go now and to be truly present so that you can be the gift of presence for others. That's all that is expected, that that is the gift. You are the best gift that you can give. So in the name of the Holy Presence, the divine gift, and the spirit of love, go now in great joy. Amen. Thank you.